Peacemaker. Oh boy, where do I even begin? How about this? Spoiler warning, and I am going to have all the fun Easter egg type stuff towards the middle of the video, but I want to give my first impression because this was supposed to be the first series in a slate where we were promised spinoffs from each individual movie. And this is really kind of one of those things that people were going, who asked for a Peacemaker show? Yeah, nobody. But oh my God, I am so glad we got it. Now, this is, like I said, setting that standard and is gold. You have to look at this like, how are they going to top this in a GCPD show or in a Green Lantern show? It is going to be vastly different and it is going to have to be really, really good because my God, I love this show. There is so much good. There's a little bad, and I'll get to the little bit of bad, and I actually don't mind the bad, but this show takes place right after Suicide Squad. There are a lot of really good parallels that you see within James Gunn and his work. Now, I am going to be very upfront. I love James Gunn. I think he does a phenomenal job at what he has been doing for years, right? Starting with Guardian of the Galaxy. Guardian of the Galaxy, nobody knew. It really wasn't that big of a property, but he took these unknown characters, minus maybe Drax and Gamora, who were more known. I mean, and made them kind of a box office success and a vital part of the MCU. But he also had to make it very kid-friendly when it comes to Marvel. This show is not kid friendly this show is very adult in everything an older superhero fan could ask for now there is a lot of like fart and dick jokes right it is very vulgar it is very violent so if that is something you don't particularly enjoy that probably won't be for you but honestly i would say give it a chance give it one episode you're gonna know whether this is the tone that you like in a superhero show within that first episode. I mean, yesterday before watching the show, I saw the intro and the intro like got me so pumped. It's so good. I'll link it in the pinned comment in case you don't haven't watched the show yet. But like it was so dumb. It was so fun. And one thing James Gunn really knows how to do is put music in it that older fans will love like I seen firehouse and I got physically excited or mentally. I don't, I don't know how I say that. It was awesome. Like I just could not believe the way he put it in. So we've got, you know, Christopher who is played by John Cena and we have him getting right out of suicide squad. So we are just right after that scene. And the parallels that James Gunn does are amazing. Like starting with something so simple, like starting with the mop, just like he did in the Suicide Squad. Those little details he puts in are phenomenal. And we see him in, I'm not going to go through, you know, scene by scene, but I want to set it up. We see him in the hospital and he is getting out, right? And one little Easter egg that I love that he put in the scene specifically is a little piece of paper, a little piece of paper with actually there's a couple pieces of paper on the bed here, but one of them specifically has a phone number for Valentina. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Doom Patrol, you probably won't know who that is, but Valentina uh, vote. I don't know. I've never known how to say her last name correctly. It's Vostok, V-O-S-T-O-K. She basically is the negative woman, right? And we have negative man in Doom Patrol. So I don't know if they're setting something up there, kind of a little bit of foreshadowing. Maybe we'll get a negative woman, but it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. I just think it's for those deep fans. Those are really cool fans. And there's an, also another piece of paper on the bed that has the names of everybody from the Suicide Squad. And it is a little bit of foreshadowing. Because we're going to meet his father, and yeah, his father is definitely a huge racist, and he just has blood sport labeled as black guy. Like, 
<laughs> okay. All right. All right. So we see him. He had some basically. Um, and there's a lot of really cool, like aesthetics is the best way to put it. Like with the American flag, with the way even his trailer looks like, I love it. So we do get to meet his dad, who is a complete and utter jackass. There is a weird parody in the background of Alex Jones, like Infowars stuff. And it's funny because what he's saying in this Infowars little thing about the liberal hive mind, they're all these type of things actually comes true by the end of it. So those little bit of foreshadowing is phenomenal on his part but we do get to meet his father and like i said in the beginning spoilers but this is going to be a big one he ends up being white dragon and that was one of the best peacemaker comics that i've ever read when white dragon actually took over for peacemaker but it does seem more like he inherited peacemaker from his father at least in this sense but he took over for peacemaker basically um, appropriated his title, killed a bunch of minorities and only come to find out he is a Nazi, like not Twitter Nazi. I mean, this dude is a real Nazi. He was part of the fourth Reich. And yeah, this video is totally demonetized now, but we have white dragon and we find out that is actually his father. So that's going to play a bigger role, but we also have the main team. Now, the main team, we did get a little bit introduced into the first Suicide Squad, or rather, the Suicide Squad movie, and that is Steve Agee playing Economos. He is normally a warden, at least in the comics of Bell Reeve. Now he's more of a techie, right? Um, we also have Harcourt, who I actually really like in this show. I there was two standout people and Harcourt was one of them. She was um, also in the comics Task Force X agent. And then we have uh, Leota, the other standout position, and Mern. Now, it's pretty funny. Leota ends up, we find out about her. She's very likable. She's very opposite of her mother. And I called this right away. It wasn't too unpredictable that Amanda Waller was going to be her mother. Now, she is exactly opposite of her mother, but she's still, in a sense, very sweet, very nice, very likable, has a good stage presence or film presence, rather. And honestly, I don't know where they're going from here with her because she is kind of turning into a little bit more of a badass. But slowly, I think she's going to be a key in a lot of this as far as the bridge between Amanda Waller and the team. I really liked her character. Actually, all of them were pretty well done. Now, the one thing I want to talk about, the bad, that people probably may be, may be huge fans, maybe not, won't like when it comes to Vigilante. Now, Adrian Chase was always a very serious character. And he is completely flipped in this one. I love it. I think it works very well in the show. But in the comics, he is, if you're going to go from one medium to the other, you will look at that character as almost unrecognizable from his comic book counterpart. He is actually one of Christopher's friend's kid, friend's little brother. He actually thought he had like a little bit of a mental handicap. Come to find out, he actually just had a really good way of not identifying who he was. And for the entirety of Vigilante and Peacemaker's friendship, he never knew who he was until the end of this. So I thought it was really well done. I know there will be some people upset at that rendition of it, but it was really good and fitting in this sense. And there are a lot of parts within this. Now, when I reviewed Suicide Squad, I said I didn't know how they were going to go forward with this because what Peacemaker did in the movie made him almost an irredeemable character. And there are many times that characters can get that low, but there's always a way of redemption. And I think they're doing that slowly with this. He's still a sexist, racist jerk at points, but then you start to see kind of the petals unfold and you see him crying 
and you see him upset. He is clearly upset at Rick, at what he did to Rick, because he even, you know, mentions what Rick said in the beginning. He is clearly evolving. He has a point that I loved when they're actually going to kill the butterfly people, which are the senator, his two children, and his wife. Um, and we'll talk about the butterflies here in a minute because I do have a pretty decent theory on it. But where he is so shaky, he doesn't want to kill. Even though he knows these people are bad, they're still children. They still originally were people. And Vigilante does come and says, you know, move over, buddy. And I thought that was a really good friendship moment. And I also thought it was a really good moment as far as the beginning to redeem him in this story. Now. I love Barbie, and then that is hardcore. I know I mentioned her earlier that she was one of the good characters, but I did want to mention that this is how you do a strong female correctly. She has something to prove. She feels like she has something to prove, and I really like that they are doing that. Now, I also like that as far as little like DC Easter eggs, we see a Wayne sticker at one point. We officially have Batmite. He's a real person in the DCEU. Yes, Batmite, yep. And Dollman. Dollman, I don't even think has been used in the comics in tens of years. But he is alive in the DCEU. I like the Aquaman jokes. Apparently, Aquaman fucks fish. I, uh, okay, all right. So let's talk about this butterfly thing that's going on. I do think it was a little pre- uh, And I could be wrong about this, but if you look at the DCEU slate that is coming up, you will notice that we are getting a Blue Beetle movie. Now, these butterflies literally embed themselves in these people's head, take over, and they are alien in nature. Okay, so with the Blue Beetle coming up, these alien artifacts coming through, the only thing that actually makes sense is the reach. The Reach is probably where these butterflies come from. And we actually at one point see almost a scarab of sorts that Peacemaker has. So my guess, and I'm going to totally throw this out there just because I want it on recording when, when the new, when the other episodes hit. I am going to guess that there is going to be some Blue Beetle references or that the end credit scene here is going to be a scarab getting lost in the DCEU to find its way to Jaime Reyes. That's my best guess. I'm, I'm assuming that is the aliens we are working with. And because they are relatively unknown, I wouldn't say the a normal per A person that doesn't read comics doesn't know who the Reach is or even maybe what a scarab is. That's what they're going to try to introduce the audience to and kind of educate them on it. And we're going to see that moving forward. That could be totally wrong, but it's the only thing that I can honestly make sense of because we already have white dragon. And then we have the bigger threat of these butterflies. Why not just call them a beetle? Why not project beetle? Because they're definitely not butterfly looking. They're not beetle looking. They look more like, I don't know, mosquitoes. Mosquitoes is the best way I can think of. But I'm guessing that's where we're going with this. This is definitely going to introduce us to Jaime Reyes in some fashion or another. Let me know if I'm wrong. That's, I, that's the only working theory I can think of. And I've been thinking about it since last night. So let me know in the comments if you think I'm wrong. But yes, I absolutely recommend the show. And if this is the standard of the DCEU going forward, I am here for it. It looks, it it was so far, all three episodes, phenomenal. Like 9.5 out of 10, every single one. It is, like I said, more adult, but it's the, it's humor that you can get down with and enjoy and the music, everything. I, I can't say, I can't sit here and keep, um shilling for this thing but it is really really good um i i'm glad to see i hope my hope is that we get more from james gunn in dceu i think that is what the dceu needs in order to really get a handle on the mess that they've created 
letting Snyder kind of go in and do his thing and then trying to erase it via flashpoint. They need somebody with, they need, my best guess is James Gunn and Jeff Johns working together to iron this thing out and move it forward. Great start though. Anyways, let me know, of course, what you guys think. Make sure you are subscribed if you enjoy this type of content. I will be reviewing each and every single episode on Fridays. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.